Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. The VA has cut off payments to thousands of veterans. What's going on? What can we do? Was there any sort of help out there? I wanted to dive into it. I, I happened to come across this article and wanted to share it with you. So the headline, again, is VA cuts off thousands of veterans' payments. How can you get help? So let's dive into it here. Hit the thumbs up for me. Subscribe. Share with a friend. All that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll get through this, uh, see if we can pick out any nuggets, see what's going on. Uh, the two asks are really, look, if you hit the thumbs up and, the, uh, and, and let the video run, that helps put this into the hands of more. So moving on, uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can do so by becoming a member. You can do that by going to the home page. You'll see highlighted members and a join button. Also created a second channel for you uh, with uh, some uh, additional dialogue. It's a co-hosted channel called Veterans Daily check that out all right let's jump into it so it starts off here thousands of veterans across the country have had to figure out how to live differently after the department of veterans affairs benefits administration or the vba remember that the va is a three-headed monster you have the vba the vha and then the national cemeteries administration so you have the three different uh i guess silos within the va so moving on, uh, the VBA sent out a letter telling them they were overpaid and had 30 days to remit payment. So if you remember, I did a video on this not too long ago. Um, so I'm curious to see where this article will lead us. Uh, this is a, a local publication, um, not my local publication, but a local publication. So they're going to hone in a little bit for the local impact. So Walnut Hills resident Randolph McGee was one of those veterans. When he opened up the letter from the VBA, he couldn't believe what he was reading. The letter said he owed the VA $126,366. That is incredible. Here's the thing. And, and these are going to be, look, Veterans are like other categories, if you want to call it that, of people. We have some veterans that are in a much more, I guess, frail situation. And I don't mean just physically, I mean financially and what have you, and are more vulnerable than others. This is typically going to be the veteran that we're talking about in this specific situation. So imagine for one moment, we're talking about a veteran wartime veteran maybe they did or didn't serve in theater but they joined and they were in during a wartime period who's receiving a safety net program benefit from the va pension and all of a sudden the va is coming back at them saying that they owe them back hundreds of thousands of dollars this is again the most vulnerable of us uh in these uh specific benefit programs such as VA pension. So let's move on. The letter said he owed the VA $126,366 in overpaid benefits. Basically, tried to count it up. I never even received that kind of money and uh, the entire time I've been getting it. I got started in 2006, McGee said. In the meantime, McGee's monthly non-service connected disability payments have stopped due to the fact he also receives social security payments. I've been out on the street at some point taking uh, taken panhandling just to eat since this came out. So, rough. McGee said, I haven't had any, any groceries. I haven't given any data because I haven't, I haven't can't pay my rent. Uh, my car is going to go in default. So they have their, the quotes is a little bit funky, but whatever. You get the pain, you get the, uh, the point here. So uh, the news publication here, I believe, which is WCPO's Craig McKee began making calls on McGee's behalf. And eventually, it's funny that their names are close, uh, began uh, since uh, on McGee's behalf and eventually got him in touch with Brooke Slocum at the VA office at 909 Vine Street in downtown Cincinnati. That letter came from VBA. They let you know that you receive a social security amount for either maybe or 
The quotes are just jacked in this. Anyway, we'll try to fumble through it. That letter came from the VBA. They let you know that the, that you receive Social Security uh, amount for either maybe or non-service connected pension, which is for low income individuals, right, of a certain age, that type of thing. If you are, if you also are getting Social Security at that same time, there's a duplication, said Slocum, coordinated entry specialist at the Cincinnati VA office. So here's the deal. The VA pension program is a low and no income benefit for wartime veterans who really, quite frankly, don't qualify for anything substantial on the disability compensation side. So disability compensations over here, VA pension, again, is the safety net program, and there is a maximum allowable pension rate. Uh, and, you know, whatever it is, it's $25,000 a year or so. So if it's $25,000 a year, or we'll, we'll call it $24,000 just to make it easy, so $2,000 a month. Well, what happens is, is that if you have zero income coming in, you can collect $2,000 a month in this scenario. However, if you have $1,500 a month coming in from Social Security, but the VA doesn't realize it because the government agencies don't talk very well, then what happens is the VA goes, well, your maximum allowable amount is $24,000, $2,000 a month, but you're getting $1,500 a month already, so we're only going to pay you $500 to keep you at that $24,000 maximum allowable. So if you don't tell them, well, now all of a sudden you're getting $1,500 too much per month, uh, and then that can add up. So. <clears throat> there, it's just a horrible situation that um, these things don't get caught right up and um, right right when they're happening, right, to get figured out. That the VA's jargon and their, their uh, forms are so cumbersome for many folks uh, and the sense of urgency to, I guess, inform the VA of this type of stuff um, usually isn't highlighted anywhere, so people don't even really realize uh, and they don't really consider Social Security as income, per se. Uh, so there's there's kind of that, I guess, mis misperception out there as well. And so then what happens is, is, again, the VA is supposed to coordinate with Social Security to figure out if there was any, you know, they have your social, figure it out, right? Um, but they let it go on for years and years and years. I, you know, I get that you have to maybe pay back some of it, uh, but... If it goes on too long, you're, you're putting the veteran in a horrific uh, situation just simply due to the fact that they are amongst the most vulnerable of us and will put them absolutely out on the street and become homeless. So let's move on in this. Uh, it should be over here in a second. She said, when veterans receive letters from the VA, Social Security office, and other agencies tied to their benefits, they need to make sure they open the letters and fully understand what they say. Write them better so they're easier to understand. Uh, if they don't, they can come to their office uh, for assistance. Bring in the paperwork. Let's go through it. Let's look line by line and then get you connected with the person who can help you figure this out, Slocum said. She says, in a case like McGee's, there are solutions through a wide range of community connections. What are some of the things we can uh, supplement? So the what is this? Free Store Food Bank has a bi-weekly food delivery. So basically what they're saying is, we're <laughs> sorry we're putting you in this horrific situation and making your life even worse, but guess what? There's a food bank down the street. You should be fine. All right, whatever. So the Free Store Food Bank has a bi-weekly food delivery that will get delivered to their house. We have the phones uh, that can be received so you can cut out your phone payments. Okay, so they're talking about giving you a free phone uh, so you can cut out your phone payments, she said. Uh, how are how are some ways where we can, or man, these quotes, probably supposed to say here, not how. Here are some ways uh, where we can reduce the amount of money that you're spending so that you're saving your money that you do receive can be paid for rent. Uh, so, 
through the VA office, Brooks Slo Slocum uh, was able to get McGee's situation in front of a judge who temporarily halted the eviction uh, from his home while the Hamilton County Veteran Services Commission was processing the application for rent relief. If for some reason the VSC doesn't approve payment for him, Slocum said they have a list of organizations they can go to next. There's Community Action Center, there's SSVF, which is Supportive Services Veterans Families, um, and there's Easter Seals, she said. McGee did receive a second letter that said his v that the VA was stopping collections. VCPO reached out to the VBA directly regarding this situation and they responded with the following statement. Recognizing the hardship and distress that these pension debts may cause, VA has paused the collection of all established pension debts and the establishment of new pension debts while we, we, while we determine the path forward. We apologize to affected veterans and their survivors for any distress because remember, survivors can also receive pension. So again, it's a low income, no income, safety net type of a program. Uh, for questions about the debt management, here's the big nugget, I guess, if you're in this situation. For questions about debt management, we encourage these veterans and survivors to visit the debt management website or call us at 800-827-0648. And, um, you know, it is important that, uh, that you reach out and figure it out. There are... Uh, or there has been a lot of focus on this. Uh, like I said, I've, I've covered this before in the past, this pension debacle. And yes, they paused the collections. Great. They're figuring out a path forward. Doesn't mean that anything's forgiven yet. So there is a chance that this could come back and rear its head again with full-fledged debt collection. However, I am hopeful that there will be some sort of a either waiver or majority waiver uh, of the past debt owed. Um, I think that that would be appropriate. So, uh, you know, you got to put a little pressure on, um, on the VA and you can do that um, typically by reaching out to your congressional members and letting them know the situation that you're in and that you feel as though you know it's it's unfair that you would have to carry that entire burden as you rely relied on the VA to help figure that um, you know qualification component out. So with that, we'll go ahead and conclude it there. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a great one. Remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.